I was just moments ago informed here on YouTube by the Pac-Man Classic among others who have sent me PMs about the unfortunate and uh, very untimely death of Juan Lanskade. He died at the age of only 29 years old, which is way too young, with it's one year older than me. Um, he had a storied career, he had been pro for about 11 years, he made his debut in 1999, he had been a part of the WWE for a very long time and his career has been somewhat unfortunate and I really didn't want to believe it when I first got the message believing this was just some guy fooling around uh, claiming he's dead because he the, the, there were a lot of comments posted in a video about Landscape returning to the WWE which was September or something last year um, so I thought this was just a guy fooling around uh, turned out it didn't it wasn't the case he is really dead and all there is right now is that he was has died of an apparent heart failure which pretty much doesn't say anything it says more than it uh, it, it says that it probably wasn't suicide um, which would have been very fortunate due to the fact that he is a family father he has two daughters that he leaves behind him and um, uh, I'm really sad about this because this was a guy I liked I was happy when he returned to the WWE last year he didn't work out he was uh, their territories uh, in FCW I believe and then he was released in April uh, I believe he only did like one appearance or something in the WWE minor territories and then he was uh, resting elsewhere or just training uh, I don't remember if he ever made it back to, to some and had some dark matches during his last stint uh, which we now know was his final stint with the WWE and as a professional wrestler. Uh, what's so sad about Lance Cade is that this, and to me, this was a guy who initially and um, primarily could have been a huge star. He had the look, he had the um, credentials, and he was he had the athleticism to be a very very good wrestler. And he was a very good wrestler, uh, and he was trained by Shawn Michaels. Uh, he so he was a Shawn Michaels student. And uh, he was also a, a um, well-crowned, and he achieved a lot as a, a tag team wrestler, along with the likes of Mark Jindrak, whom he, I believe, was the first tag team partner he had when he arrived on the WWE scene. They uh, feuded a little bit with the Dudleys in 2003, 2004, uh, and they wrestled a lot for the tag team titles. Never, never reached a pinnacle to, to, to gain these titles but then he, he started teaming up with Trevor Murdoch and they I believe after, just after a month or so in 2005 where they debuted they won the titles from Hurricane and Rosie they lost the titles some month or so later to Blue Tuesday to Big Show and Kane uh, and then they split up they got back together and they, they continued along the way and won two, yet two another tag team championships in the WWE and then we all remember the, the split up where Trevor Murdoch started singing he was released Trevor Murdoch soon after that and Lance Cade was put to work out for the second time as a singles wrestler the first time he he, he was some refined southern hospital man hospital man uh, who had this gimmick it didn't work out was somewhat of a cowboy then he started working out with being the right hand of Chris Jericho I don't know if you remember that and he and he actually pinned Shawn Michaels on a match on Raw in a tag team match along where I believe it was Chris Jericho versus Triple H and Shawn Michaels in uh, yeah, this was in 2008 right before he was released due to an unfortunate seizure which came from an overdose of, of painkillers on an airplane and where he was arrested and was taken away and there was a huge buzz on the internet whether what, what had really happened was it painkillers alcohol or just heart failure some people really believed he had died right there on the spot at that time due to a heart attack and Jim Ross posted in his Ross report that this was an unfortunate situation and that and he believed that Cage sooner or later would be back in the WWE because they apparently had high faith in him and 
And if you didn't believe that before, you would really get the, the feeling from the Ross report right there that, that this guy was going to come back and WWE wasn't done with him. And, and, and they, as I said, they weren't. He came back, but then later was released again. So I believe he was released, but when he came back, they already had a lot of new stars they wanted to groom. And since then, we've seen Jack Swagger, Sheamus rise to the top. You've seen Kofi Kingston. Cody Rose, John Morrison, The Miss, and a lot of other wrestlers climbing the ranks, I believe that there was no place for Lance Cade. Because rumors ha has it that he was supposed to be in, have been the breakout star of the of the year of 2009, and that he was really a pet project, and Triple H and Shawn Michaels both pushed for WWE to, to make something out of him. And if you remember it, Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch both uh, feuded with G Generation X in 2008 as well. Um, no, 2006, sorry, 2006, uh, and so, so they really wanted to make something out of him and that makes it so unfortunate and, and the fact that after his seizure on the plane with painkillers he came out and he, and he publicly acknowledged that he was his mistake, he, made, he, he, he was the one making it wrong, he was gonna come back uh, and he, he said this is something that I don't, I don't stand for, and I'm not gonna do it again. Uh, so often in this, in this world, we see hockey players, we see wrestlers, sportsmen, politicians, and other people. They, they, as soon as they are blamed and put in, put in blame, and they use something. If we're gonna use a rhetorical, rhetorical term, it's called remotio criminis, meaning you simply distance yourself from the crime, claiming this has nothing to do with you as a person you're trying to blame someone else or you try to blame the, the situation or, or the system but well, what made me so proud about Lance Cade was that he came out and he said that this was me it wasn't the business, it isn't wrestling, it wasn't anyone else, it was me, I made a mistake and to me uh, I felt that this guy, he may have made a mistake, he's gonna come back and he's a, a he's a pure guy and I, I don't I don't say that he isn't a pure guy, but that just adds to it why it's so sad that he dies because he felt so innocent in a way and he felt uh, real and that's why I'm gonna miss landscape and um, that's you see in the world and, and as you live and as life moves on and situations and things pass by there are these small little things that in the end when you think it's all said and over it's gonna play the biggest of roles because hadn't that seizure happened in 2008 and he would have gone on to be a big star in WWE he had had this huge career, he might have been champion by now and this might have not, not have happened that's that's what makes it so sad now, now be it that it was a disease he had and, and that his heart was weak and he died from that it would have been inevitable because then it would have happened anyway but if it was a cause of bad circumstances and some 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 things that we might not know some abuse or or anything like that then it's really sad and that might go out as a signal to to other wrestlers that just keep up straight don't take shortcuts don't abuse painkillers don't if you if you have pain if you if you suffer from wrestling just step away it ain't worth it it ain't worth tearing your body apart yeah you gotta make a living but you still you need to keep your body clean you need to stay healthy and you need to prioritize and to me uh, i will always prioritize life and living I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to risk that for anything whatsoever. It's easy for me to sit here and say that, um, but uh, to me this is this is so sad because this no one should should die too young, but uh, especially not Lance Cade. So I send out my condolences and I'm gonna miss you. Rest in peace.